Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason and this is my first National Road episode in the state of Indiana, the Hoosier State. And I, in this case, I'm kind of going backwards. Most National Road travelers would rather go westward. In this case, I'm going eastward. So Terre Haute is the first major stop on my National Road journey as I'm going, you know, throughout the state. And at least 150 miles go through the state of Indiana. And I'm going to show you some cool buildings. Terre Haute is one of Indiana's largest cities and major ones as well. With over 58,000 people living here, it is the county seat of Vigo County. And behind me is the Vigo County Courthouse. I'll show you that in a second. But I'll go ahead and uh, start the tour. Here we go. So I'm assuming this is the tallest building here in Terre Haute. I mean, it stands out pretty well. I mean, the architecture, the dome that's on top, and even that little building that's on top. I can't think of the name of it. Um, but uh, this was constructed in 1888. And yeah, it's been in use for more than a century, obviously. In 1983, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places. So, I mean, it's definitely historical in its own right. It's been well kept. And behind the courthouse is Terre Haute City Hall. It was built and dedicated in 1936. And it just, I just happened to see it right there. Mayor at the time was Samuel F. Beecher. And the President of the United States, of course, was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. But I thought I'd show you this. It was kind of cool. So here is one of two kiosks of the historic National Road that was put up by the Indiana National Road Association. Very similar to what they have in Illinois. And that right there is Indiana State University's Memorial Stadium. But here is the front panel. It talks about, like it did in Illinois, Thomas Jefferson authorized it, George Washington conceived it, Abraham Lincoln traveled on it. And the National Road didn't reach Indiana until 1827, even though the road started in 1806 in Maryland. But from 1830 to 1850 here in Indiana, that was when the National Road hit its heyday because travelers were coming here like crazy, looking for new opportunities from the West. And because, like I said, the National Road, it was a road that connected to all the states, like from Ohio to Pennsylvania to West Virginia, or Virginia at the time, to Maryland. Blacksmith shops and taverns sprung up along the road to serve the diversity of travelers. Stagecoaches bringing letters, newspapers, and cash, supporting the booming economy and carrying the correspondence of happy accomplishments, births, and deaths. And of course, back then, there was no such thing as paved roads because, yeah, the trip was often unpleasant. Wagon axles deep in mud, clothes wet, and backs aching from the rough ride. Stagecoaches, carriages, and wagons vie for space alongside foot travelers, noisy cattle, hogs, and geese. But, as I said in my previous National Road videos, I mean, the National Road, um, you know, heyday did last because faster means of transportation came, such as railroads and canal networks. And then that was when road traffic decreased. But like many other roads, the National Road fell into a state of disrepair. And, it's, and on the back, I'll show you how it made its comeback. But here are some photos like George Washington. You know, he thought the National Road was very important because the United States had to secure its vast western frontiers to make sure Europeans don't capture it. Also, Albert Gallatin, Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, when the National Road was put in place in 1806. He presents the plan for a national system of roads and canals to Thomas Jefferson on April 4th, 1808. And the National Road also was to link several state capitals, including Columbus, Indianapolis, which we'll be visiting, and Vandalia, which at one time was the capital of Illinois. I'm gonna go ahead and go on the back here. So about that comeback, the automobile revived the National Road in the 1920s. Cars and trucks took to the road, and the federal government established a nationwide network of paved all-weather highways. The old National Road was one of the first routes designated under the new federal highway numbering system in 1926, kind of like Route 66, but this time it was named U.S. Route 40. So that went all the way to 
Atlantic City, New Jersey, all the way to San Francisco, California. U.S. Highway 40 has changed numerous times as it only goes now to a part of Utah, but U.S. 40, most of it does parallel or um, is technically the historic national road. But once again, because of this comeback, the road gave rise to new opportunities. Like the blacksmith shops and taverns of the past, diners, gas stations, and motels ushered in a new era of prosperity. Until the 1970s, with the completion of Interstate 70, US 40 was one of the country's primary east-west routes. And then in 2002, the US Secretary of Transportation designated the historic national road from Maryland to Illinois an all-American road. Indiana is to this day, actively working to preserve its segment of the road, structures, and landscapes along this historic corridor. Today, the road continues to beck on travelers like you as it has for more than 200 years. Welcome to Indiana. This is the route. Now, technically, again, I'm going backwards because people, when, I mean, I'm sure, like Route 66, there is no right way of doing it, but I'm sure when people travel the National Road, they want to start where it originally started in Cumberland. But this time around, I'm that's going to be my end point. But for traditionalists, yes, that is Ohio. The first city is Richmond, which I'm planning on hitting. Then all these, Indianapolis, the capital, and then down here to Terre Haute, which I'm currently at. So I'm going to go ahead and take you to that other kiosk. All right, so here's the other kiosk. It is located at the Rose Holman Institute of Technology baseball field. And then this one has a lot more stuff talking about the road in front of you was once the most important highway in the United States. Head west and you can go all the way to San Francisco. Okay, <laughs> with some exceptions here and there. Head east and you can drive to Atlantic City. Depending on your choice, you'd have the opportunity to cross the Rocky Mountains, view fossils at Dinosaur National Monument, visit a fort from the French and Indian War, or catch a fly ball in Baltimore. Okay. This road, U.S. Route 40, grew out of the old National Road in 1926 to become one of the nation's first transcontinental highways. All right, so the stone building, that one right there, it was once a service station. See, it says here, look at the stone building behind you. What was it? A playhouse. Hansel and Gretel's Cottage. <laughs> a hot dog stand. Nope, it was actually an early gas station. As we all know, cars were new in the 1920s and they changed the face of America. They required smooth services to drive on, headlamps to light the way, and specialized services to stay running. Handsomely designed service stations like this one rose up alongside the nation's highways to keep legions of shiny new cars and trucks humming and purring. Service with a smile, gliding off US 40, you would be greeted by a snappy gas attendant in a crisp uniform. No need to get out of the car, gas was pumped for you. Clean your windshield, check your oil and tire pressure, no problem. Look under the hood, happy to. These services were all a routine part of pulling in and gassing up. I'm sure a lot of those people also worked for tips, but of course I wasn't around back then. Thousands of well-located and conveniently accessed service stations were established by national oil corporations. A new day dawned along America's highways. It was now possible to leave Indiana and drive in comfort and confidence, knowing that the road would be paved and that the gas would be available from the Hoosier State to the Golden Gate. Okay, so it really, it actually was not on the site. It was um, built in 1931, but so it was moved to the site. Okay, interesting. And it's a cottage style station. It is one of several designs developed by the oil companies to better reflect the architecture of local communities. And this was uh, advertisement for the Hoosier Petroleum Company or Hoosier Pete of Indianapolis in 1930. And then service with a smile at Standard Oil Station in Terre Haute, circa the 1940s. And then on the back, it says the same thing as um, the previous marker did, so no need to go through all that. I'm gonna go ahead and check out this uh, service station real quick. I'm surprised they don't have it really as a tourist center. And doesn't look like there's any, not, not very much in there, but whatever, a heating element. And I'm not even gonna bother going in. Still, I'm glad they preserved this and not preserved it, but they, they're keeping it alive somehow. And it looks like a lot of people are practicing ball. Go get them, guys. 
So Terre Haute has some claims to fame. It is the home of Indiana State University. And it's been around before the National Road. It is also the birthplace of the Coca-Cola Contour bottle. And there's also many murals here. But yes, this is the Vigo County Historical Museum. And yeah, these are super large murals. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the kind of Coca-Cola bottle I'm talking about from like the 1950s. Like the kind that James, you've seen James Dean, maybe Elvis or Marilyn Monroe you know like drink out of those things so yeah and by the way there are plenty of uh those coca coke bottle I'll, I'll show you i'll show you what i'm talking about in a second but i'm gonna walk past the museum real quick and in front of the museum sorry there's a train going by local legends walk of fame there's oscar bar not oscar meyer the hot dog guy but oscar Bauer. Salty Simon. William Riley McKean. And yeah, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard of most of these people. The only one I in fact the only one I only have heard of was this guy right here, President William Henry Harrison. Um yeah, Banks the Wabash, the composer of the song is actually from here too but yes Terre Haute does proudly celebrate its uh distinction as the birthplace of the coke bottle i don't know how many of these are found around town but i did read at least 40. i never knew trains could be that loud but uh <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of local artists painted a lot of these and they're placed at many locations around here in Terre Haute and they all have like a theme going on but this is definitely the version that most of us remember. So any bottle enthusiasts, definitely uh, make your way to Terre Haute. <laughs> the Wabash Cigar Store. And that over there is the Terre Haute Convention Center. Coming soon, the Larry Bird Museum. And for the kiddos, you got the Terre Haute Children's Museum. Apparently this used to be a Masonic Lodge. Huh, interesting. So I wonder what they do with all these historical buildings And here's another one of those Coke bottles. Get a load of this. This one obviously is themed after the Children's Museum. So as I'm strolling throughout downtown Terre Haute, I see a couple Crossroads of America markers. 7th Street and Wabash Avenue, which is this. The old national road proposed by George Washington to open a path for development of the Northwest Territory was begun in 1806 in Cumberland, Maryland. It was surveyed through Indiana in 1827 and built through Terre Haute in 1834. This pioneer corridor of American history became paved US 40 in 1926 and was completed coast to coast by 1935. By that, they mean by the National Trails Road, by the way. In Terre Haute as Wabash Avenue, it intersected the original US 41, the nation's major north-south highway at this site. Dedicated July 4th, 1988. As it says, U.S. 41 is one of the major north-south U.S. highways. This goes from Michigan's northern peninsula all the way to Miami, Florida. However, both highways, as sometimes usually the case, have changed alignments even though both U.S. highways 40 and 41 still go through Terre Haute. Here's another one that talks about the crossroads of America where U.S. highways 40 and 41 intersect. U.S. Highway 40, the old National Road, which opened the West for settlement. And U.S. Highway 41, I apologize for the loud trucks, by the way. A major north-south route were designated part of the original federal highway system in 1926. Their intersection in Terre Haute at Wabash Avenue and 7th Street became the Crossroads of America. And this was put here in 1998 by the Indiana Historical Bureau and Vigo County Historical Society. 
So yes, in other words, those two historical markers say this right here is the Crossroads of America. How about that? Another popular attraction is the Swope Art Museum that is put in the Swope Block building that was dedicated in 1901. Here's the mural on the side of the building. And then that is the Indiana Theater, put up in 1922. Another recommended historical place is the Eugene V. Debs Museum and Home, which I did a separate episode on. There are plenty of restaurants, but one place I recommend is Rick's Smokehouse and Grill, located near ISU. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more Historic National Road episodes.